We will now proceed with the first audio sequence, which is some eight minutes long. You are invited to provide us with questions on this sequence per written comments straight away, and we'll have to time address some of these for approximately five minutes after the audio sequence has finished. Any additional remaining questions will be addressed in the Q&A document to be made available after the long. Climate financing instrument financing nationally appropriate mitigation action means um, the financing implementation as opposed to preparation. And we're not financing adoption either, but mitigation. So the number facility has been founded by the German and the British ministries of um, environment in 2012. And uh, it's by now co-funded by the European Commission and Denmark. Since 2012, we had three calls for proposals for number of support projects and received about 140 proposals. And um, we're constantly evaluating these proposals and drawing all lessons learned. And one thing that we saw from those proposals is that one issue, and this is why we're going to talk about this today, the issue of financial, financial mechanisms is seriously underdeveloped. Um, and the financing mechanism for us are key to non support projects and phenomena and are very important to us. And why this is so important has to do with two topics, let's say, for us. It's with the topic of transformation change and with the topic of implementation readiness. So, then when we start with transformation of change, what do you understand by transformation of change and why are um, financing mechanisms important for that? Well, when the Navability was launched in 2012, it was launched with uh, the requirement um, to promote transformation of changes in those countries that were implementing NAMS. And that use, that word uh, used in this uh, context was new, uh, but welcomed uh, in, in the sector in general simply because it was understood as being uh, a signal that the changes that we are needing in order to meet the two degree target, but now between one and a two, um, is more than just change, but it's like a transformation. Uh, but we were all left with intuitively understanding what does that mean. It does not have a definition. Other programs have adopted the term as well. Researchers have been looking into what could it mean, but it still remains a fact without definition. So when when we here at the Nano facility are, are looking at the transformation of change, what we are looking for can be expressed, I think, with the three uh, central requirements that we are hoping uh, to uh, be met by, by applicants. One is we would like to uh, see what we could call a paradigm shift. What does that mean then? What is a paradigm shift? Well, a paradigm shift to us would be a, a significant change in, for instance, the use of technology. And one example could be that we are seeing uh, air conditioning established or set up by households in, in, uh, in uh, housing blocks that are all put in their AC, AC units on. Um, we also have houses full of AC units um, on the outside. And one paradigm shift could be we are now changing that into the central air conditioning. That would require that there would be building regulation and uh, the investors would then uh, change from the private households to the developers of, of the So that, that could be a paradigm shift. 
um, broad piloting for um, a relatively quick shift from one situation to another. Uh, not overnight, of course, but we would like to see a change which is sort of ahead of the game, one which is not happening anyway, which would be business as usual, but we are looking at one that would be happening quicker than would otherwise have been expected. Um, and then the most important part is that we would like to see the transformations being permanent. We are in with a temporary financing to five years, uh, maximum in fact uh, five years, um, and we would not like to see a situation falling back to where it came from when our support uh, is out. Um, so the permanence of the change is also to us a significant part of the definition of uh, a, a transformation. Okay, now having talked about what we what we understand by transformational change in the normal facility, how do financial mechanisms come into the picture? Any change that you would see in uh, use of technology or the behavior of, of those people or, or corporations or even public sector uh, entities, any change in behavior that they may do in order to choose the lower emission alternative would be reflected in the cash flows. The cash flows are integrated linked, of course, with uh, the financing mechanisms. The financing mechanisms are, in fact, after the cash flows. So, say again, the, the, the AC units to go from split units to, to, to central air conditioning, you see a shift in, in cash flow simply because private households stop buying air conditioners and developers start buying them. But that's a different kind of units. So that is a, a significant shift in, in cash flows that can be uh, detected um, and can also be promoted by different financial mechanisms that we will be setting up in our facility. That's what we're looking for. Now, how to determine how big a cash flow change uh, is needed in order to signify a transformational change? That would be case by case, and that would be for the applicants to, to demonstrate that this shift in cash flow and this financing mechanism that we have put in place in order to achieve this shift in cash flow is in fact so significant that it must be considered um, a transformation. So, on our paper on transformational change that is on the Nama Facilities website, um, we have a couple of keywords, or we mentioned a couple of keywords, like replicability, scalability, um, um, innovative potential, um, regulation, behavior change. How, how does that come together with the financing mechanism? Well, these are, these are terms that may be linked with uh, the issue of permits. That means we are looking for changes that we will be participating in starting, but we are just as interested in seeing them evolve, develop, expand, um, and on a permanent basis. It's not, not something that ends when the facility is out, but something that in fact continues and expands when, when we have left. Um, and we want to see uh, evidence that this has actually been considered in uh, the application. All right, um, excellent. We are now done uh, with the first audio sequence. Um, we are aware that the quality of the audio sequences is not as good as our live chat here. So please bear with us and remember that the files can be downloaded separately from the internet afterwards. Uh, we did note some of the questions which were coming in and I'd now like to, to turn to Zuren to go uh, through some of them. So Zuren, please, uh, the first question uh, we received um, is how can I actually prove that my NAMA is transformational? Well, the, the short answer is you cannot. There, there's no uh, black or white in, in uh, determination of, of uh, transformationality, if you will. Um, what, what, we, uh, what we would believe is that in most cases you actually do know yourself 
whether what you're looking at is something that is shifting, as, as we said on the, on, the, on, the, on the clip here, shifting the current situation significantly away from uh, where it is to something uh, different, mainly, and that's what we commonly see, mainly on the basis of a technology shift. Um, so, uh, I think we, we, you should, you will, in most cases, know yourself whether what you have is actually a transformational NAMA or whether you're just trying to make it look like it is. Um, so, it's 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 well, that, that's not very helpful, but it in fact is it's more like a gut feeling if you really think this is something that is shifting. Okay, thanks very much, Søren, for this further information. Second question uh, we received. Um, if I do not think that my NAMA is particularly transformational, is it then a NAMA? Sure. But there, there's nothing that says that a NAMA must be transformational. And in, in fact, the, 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 the concept of transformational change is, you could say, invented by donors. And that is as a criterion for, for um, being relevant or interesting to finance. But it doesn't mean that any NAMA has to be transformational. It might even be that that transformation in a given sector is not even nationally appropriate, which is what a NAMA is uh, ultimately intended to be. Uh, so transformation and NAMA is not synonymous. Okay. And um, could you then please give an example, a very specific example uh, of a paradigm shift? Sure. There's there. You, you know what 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 paradigm shifts are. You've seen it. I think the most the most uh, common ones are those that we are seeing or have been seeing over the over many years in in IT. Uh, latest one from normal mobile phones to smartphones. That that is a technology shift, and that is also a paradigm shift uh, in in our view. If you transfer uh, translate uh, that into uh, the area that that we're working in on on emissions reduction, you could say at a shift from petrol-driven two-wheelers to electric two-wheelers would be a paradigm shift. Um, could also, as we mentioned in the clip here, it's a shift from from uh, split unit individual ACs to central uh, cooling systems in housing blocks would also be a paradigm shift. Um, yeah, what is a simple one? Just just changing uh, coal for firing to um, to biomass firing would also be uh, a shift in uh, in the way in which power is produced. Okay, thank you, Søren. Um, we do have a couple of questions uh, coming in now, which refer rather to the general setup of the NAMA facility as such, and I think we will address them separately in the write up to the Q and A session. Maybe at this stage, um, one last question for this first um, topic to, to you: uh, Does the, the change in cash flow refer to who is paying or what is being paid for or both? Mainly, as I also indicate now, mainly what is being paid for and not so much who is paying. But of course, when you consider at a different priority, when you want to make investments happen in the lower emission alternative, you will in that process also consider who should pay for that. Or maybe a distribution of the cost between the different stakeholders when you determine that uh, technology shift. 